stat stone. I was a little nervous about bringing non-rodents onto this case. Mm. But your mustelid mathematics team has been fantastic. <laughs> America may not go along with the metric system, but perhaps we can make stoats as measurement the new standard. <laughs> so now, we are down to 16 suspects of all shapes and sizes. Ready to get to work? Yeah. Let's go. This week 16 is the last time the higher ranked contenders enjoy, all together now, home habitat advantage. The Midgardia Sea Star was on the ocean floor, its arms raised to catch tiny prey. The Ammonite descended toward the Sea Star, deeper and deeper. The pressure was increasing, literally. The Ammonite shell could not handle going down this deep. With a snap, crack, and pop, the Ammonite imploded, leaving the Sea Star as the winner. The red kangaroo hopped and grazed in the Australian grassland. The red brocket stood and looked around for some sheltering trees. The kangaroo noticed this brocket and hopped toward it. The brocket froze. Oh my god! The kangaroo stomped the ground. The rocket red brocket made a hasty hop and exit and ran off. The devil frog waddled through the Peruvian underbrush. It was not very stealthy. The harpy eagle swooped down to attack, but came up against the spikes and armored back of the devil frog. The frog snapped back at the harpy and missed, careening off balance and rolling over. The harpy seized the advantage and sank its talons into the frog's belly. Devil food on the menu. The dugong cruised along the shallow waters of the Red Hello, Sea, baby. while the Egyptian fruit bat flew just above it. The bat was hot and disoriented in the sun. It dipped down to splash in the water and was pummeled by a wave. The bat began to sink and was chomped, not by the dugong, but by a tiger shark which had been headed toward the dugong. The bat met a grisly end while the dugong evaded the carnage and advanced to the elite trait. MC, the Sphinx and the Ifrit met in the rainforest in Gabon. The Ifrit spies a tasty looking beetle on the forest floor and it swooped down to chomp it. The mandrel noticed this colorful and tasty looking Ifrit mm. and grabbed it. The mandrel chomped, killing the Ifrit and then it spit most of the remains out because his mouth went numb. Ah! The Ifrit is gone. The Sphinx monkey is sort of uncomfortable, but remains. The bay cat lurked in the grass, watching the red hartebeest. A young cheetah tried to intimidate the hartebeest. The hartebeest stood its ground. Would you go away? And even chased off the cheetah. The big cat tried to slink away, but the hartebeest caught sight of it. Another cat in its territory? Go away! The hartebeest started towards the big cat, which fled <laughs> in abject terror. The hartebeest wins. One last time, we encounter all together now, home habitat advantage. The vampire squid fell victim to the same thing as its namesake, sunlight. Transported to shallow waters, it was blinded and racked with pain from the sudden change in pressure. It flailed in agony, attracting the anchovy, 
which mercifully ended its misery. Tasty. The anchovy advances. Tapir can reach weights of up to 909 stoats. The red wolf, meanwhile, weighs in at a lean 163 stoats. The mountain tapir was peacefully grazing on a North American grassland. Suddenly it stopped and sniffed the wind. The red wolf was headed its way. The tapir slid down the hill with the wolf in hot pursuit. The tapir stomped the ground and whistled. The wolf stared at this odd, whistling, stomping creature and decided to leave it alone in search of easier prey. The mountain tapir wins! Well, the numbers do not lie. We are now down to eight suspects. Which ones will be eliminated next? Join us next time for the Enigma of the elite trait. Thank you for watching.